Okay, so this is the September edition of the Cosmos SDK Community Dev Call. Uh, this is a monthly call that is open to uh, Cosmos SDK developers and community members that are interested in learning about the progress of uh, SK, SDK de development. And uh, this is hosted by the Regen Network engineering team. Uh, we got a couple uh, members of our engineering team on the call today, and we're just going to run through um, some items uh, on our agenda in regards to recent releases that have come out in the last month and looking ahead at some of the uh, work that we're working on in relation to the 4.5 release, as well as what the uh, roadmap looks like to v1.0. Um, last month we covered a quick overview of the authorization module tutorial as well as the releases that happened in August. And um, there's no demo today, but uh, yeah, we have an opportunity to discuss uh, some of these releases that are um, going out as two releases going out today. So uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and dive into that. Uh, the V4.4 release uh, went out September 1st. Uh, this was a security release, um, which contains, contains a consensus breaking change. Uh, this release actually, was went out as a, a fix for the 4.3 release and 4.3 is discontinued. Um, so chains that are upgrading will need to upgrade to the 4.4 release. And as you see here, uh, there is a note about when performing the upgrade that uh, the upgrade needs to happen directly to the 4.4.1 release, which went out today. It's gonna be recommended to do that upgrade. Um, this, there was no new features added in this release. This was uh, simply a security release. And um, if you have questions about that, we can dive into that in the discussion. Uh, but the 441 release, as I just mentioned, it did go out today. Um, it fixes non-determined issue when performing in-place store migrations, um, fixes an issue using ABCI, query requests, height field if it is non-zero, otherwise continue using client context height, IAVL V017.1, um, significant, significant performance improvements on a batch load and improving the cache KV store data structures algorithms to no longer take O N to the power two time and <laughs> interleaving iterators and insertions. Uh, Robert, you're on the call. Do you wanna provide any additional comments in relation to this release? Yes, uh, thanks, Ryan. You, in fact, correctly already summarized it. Uh, so we have two um, minor fixes. Uh, I think the important one is the second one uh, for the user who is using the, the chain. Yeah, so uh, previously, when um, we wanted to get some historical query, it was not working correctly, so that's fixed. And the first one is very important for all the uh, Chains which are going to upgrade. Um, we kind of missed that uh, in our tests. Only when Terra was doing, um, oh, sorry, uh, that was the crypto.com, it was doing the tests on a bigger scale. Notice that um, it was not stable and we found that there is non determinism. So uh, bear in mind that it's only on the update. Uh, it's not, there's no post divorce case with what can happen. Basically when you um, when you make an upgrade, then the chain can hold, halt immediately during the upgrade because the uh, validators will not agree on uh, the right state commitment. Um, so if that happens, you need to do an upgrade uh, one more time and you need to have, you better have the, the, um, the backup. Otherwise, yeah, the, the, the validators will need to agree uh, manually to rather sync and um, pick up the one of the, I think there are only two options, yes, um, uh, about the state. Um, so the determinism here will, you know, 44 is, is related to uh, the order between uh, the oath and the stake. Um, uh, migration and which of them is, is going to happen first. Uh, right, so again, uh, if you are planning to do uh, uh, an upgrade to 044 uh, and you are running 042, then use 44.1. If you already upgraded to 043, 
then uh, you are not um, a subject to that issue. It's only when you upgrade from 42 to 44. Hmm? Great, thank you. Uh, the next slide is uh, the release for 4.2.10, which it, it includes uh, several of the same changes, just backporting to the 4.2 release uh, branch and uh, making that 4.2.10 release. So it's available for chains that are currently using 4.2. Uh, is there any additional context you want to provide here as well, Robert? Oh, nothing specific. I think the, um, uh, the, yeah, the, the important one is also uh, maybe should, I should like say that in both of the cases, yes, we, we um, uh, merged the uh, tender mint upgrades to 34.13, if I'm not mistaken, which has some fixes and performance improvements. Um, and uh, yeah, this one, this one was mainly requested by the chains which are still on 42 and wanted to uh, run on the latest agreement. Cool, great, thank you. Uh, and transaction improvements in V045. I believe Corey, you were gonna maybe provide a little overview of this. Yeah, um, so we move Amri who's not able to, to join today. Um, he's kind of leading the coordination on our TX improvements working group. Um, we are uh, currently in the place of migrating uh, middleware, um, sorry, m migrating uh, the anti handle functionality into a middleware architecture. And that is kind of in an effort to support um, this feature of meta transactions. Um, this is the, the kind of next uh, feature that, that we're sort of holding to for our 045 release and the main piece of functionality that um, yeah, they were kind of slotting in within the scope of 045. Um, what meta transactions is, is it's the ability for someone to pay a fee at, in the form of a tip that is not natively tracked on the blockchain in which they're executing that tip on. So the example here would be that a regen token holder can submit a transaction on the hub, given that let's say they have IBC regen tokens on the hub, um, without holding any atoms on the hub. They would be paying a tip in this IBC regen denom, um, and then someone, a uh, third party who kind of intercepts that transaction um, with the tip would be like taking, um, taking that, adding a fee to it in the native atom token, and um, then submitting that fully um, kind of signed transaction with signatures both from the original user as well as this um, this fee payer on chain and the on chain execution of that would send the tip to the fee payer and would deduct the fee from the fee payer. Um, so that's the general flow and this is this is meant to be uh, a story that really helps with both IBC and um, and general like DEX functionality as now, you know, we're in a situation where at least in the context of both osmosis and the gravity decks, there is a, there's a lot of token holders who might not necessarily have the native staking token on that chain, but they've got a bunch of IBC denoms that they're wanting to transact or to swap, make swaps between. And um, so it's important that fees are able to be paid uh, and that people are able to be able to send transactions on a network that doesn't, um, that, that, that doesn't that does have a minimum um, a minimum gas price um, without the end user having the staking token. So what this involves is two new sign modes, amino aux and direct aux, which are in the process of being implemented. Um, once those are written, then basically the SDK side of this work will be complete and we'll be planning to tag an 045 release. Um, we'd initially wanted to implement this new auxiliary sign mode as uh, a kind of part of this larger sign mode textual work where we think about sort of what's the future of a hardware wallet friendly um, sign mode. Um, but that specification work seems to be requiring a bit more uh, rigorous design and conversations with, in particular, the, the Ledger team, our friends at Zondax, who are working on the Cosmos Ledger app as well as some other uh, client developers um, 
that just uh, Simon from the, the Cosm.js team. And so that working group has started and is going to be kind of decoupled from this 045 release process. And uh, yeah, if anyone's wanting to get involved in that, you can let me know or ping Amory. Um, yeah, it's a sign of a for working group and it's uh, it's probably gonna take some time to get this right, but you know, we're trying to involve the right people and uh, yeah, keep the ball rolling on it. Great, thanks Corey. Um, and the final item we have here is the road to V1.0. Uh, Robert, I believe you're gonna provide a little update on this. Right. So um, we don't want to break uh, the proton. But, um, uh, yeah, we don't want to break the proton uh, API. By the proton API, I guess what we mean is the, the format communicating with the blockchain, the proton communication. Um, for 1.0, we are really focusing now to um, to do the 1.0 release. Um, we already see that community is having an issue with keeping up with 0.4x releases, notably uh, the tool developers who are not able to um, import at the same time to um, 0.40 something um, um, uh, versions of uh, Cosmos SDK into their code. Normally that should only um, be a problem for those who need to deserialize the state, the database state, or the um, uh, uh, this, this, the objects from the state. Uh, and um, yeah, we have the cases. Also, this wants to bring us to, um, let's say, uh, uh, a major release communicating that it's really stable, it's used in the production, and uh, we are keeping up and doing hopefully a good job. A uh, few major things going to v.1, so it's reducing few um, technical gaps we have. So notably the singleton uh, with the uh, SDK.config. Another one uh, is the app wiring, so the base app and all the um, um, uh, boilerplate code around it. And uh, uh, finally, the um, modularization, the modularization of the Cosmos SDK by um, extracting, pulling off the uh, compiled proto Go code uh, to um, a separate uh, Go modules. Great, thanks for the update. Um, the last item here is just a reminder that there is a issue open up on Cosmos SDK repo that is uh, has a list of all of the working groups that are currently um, in progress, uh, either in the design phase or the implementation phase. And uh, if you're interested in joining in and helping out with any of these uh, um, tasks or projects, uh, there's links to the discussion and there's links to epics and uh, you can see in what's what's going on in terms of issues and, and get involved with the members of different working groups and uh, help out with the Cosmos SDK development. Uh, but that brings us to the end of our first part of this meeting, which is just a quick update. And now I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and we'll uh, dive into the discussion.